Live from New York City, it's the Wendy Williams Show. How you doing? The kids have come to play today. You won't believe what I'm about to tell you. With all due respect, have several seats. My girls are always turned out. I give it to you straight, no chaser. Five minutes ago, better than I deserve. Let's get started. It's time for Hot Topics. The conversation that I just had via inner office. Um, what do you do that when you dial, dial an extension? Inter office conference yes. or something? Well, Phone Peter call? called into my office. He's upstairs getting ready. Like five minutes ago, literally I'm tying my belt and putting on my watch. Already ready, my shoes were on. He called, he said, Wendy, go in. Wow. He says there is not a question off limits. I know. So Peter Thomas is ready to entertain us and he'll be out here a little later on in the show. It's just a little something. But, you know, it's, I want you to see how long it is just in case you're tall like me. You can see that this jumpsuit goes all the way down and I even have it on with heels and there's still Jumpsuit ready. Now, if you, have, if you happen to be like a, a shorty, then what you do is if you win this, in, if you bid on my, in my auction and you get this, then you just hem it. If you're young and fun, cut it off and make it a romper. It's, a, it's Robert Rodriguez and it's one of the many hottest items in my um, auction for eBay charity. Um, there are only about seven more days in the auction, and it's seven seasons worth of clothes that while I love them, when am I gonna wear them again? You know what I mean? <laughs> so this jumpsuit is gently worn. I only wore it twice. Once for the show opening, you know, live from New York, you see I'm dancing in it. And then, and then once, it's a size 12, and there's no stretch in it, just so that you know. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Just so you know, go to wendyshow.com for all the information, and remember, only seven more days. Yeah! So, uh, one of the big stories everybody's talking about is Melania Trump's speechwriter coming clean. The bigger story is that she wasn't fired. The bigger, bigger story is that she was a ballet um, dancer before being a speechwriter. Is there anyone in the Trump administration qualified to actually do their jobs? I mean, well, people would say, she, he's not qualified for president. The kids, while they're beautiful kids and very smart in their own rights, they were running around, um, uh, they've been running around like they actually are, you know, work, like they are heads of state for their father as opposed to just the kids learning stuff. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. All right, Melania, we know that she's being accused of plagiarizing uh, heavy parts of Michelle Obama's 2008 convention speech. Now, this longtime staffer, who also happens to be a friend of the family, uh, the Trump family, is taking responsibility. She turned in her letter of resignation, um, and Donald didn't fire her. He said, everybody makes mistakes. Hmm. <laughs> Don't get any ideas around here. Anyway, look. <laughs> 
the speech writer says that Melania, she and Melania were on the telephone and um, um, Melania said that she really does um, admire Michelle Obama and she really d did admire that speech that Michelle gave when the Obamas first got into the White House, you know, when they, they were doing the um, convention rather in 2008. So Melania is on the phone again with the speechwriter, and Melania's got part of the speech in her hands and, and, and talking on the phone to the ballet, <laughs> the ballet um, writer. <laughs> I'm not saying anything, that there's anything wrong with doing ballet and writing, <laughs> but I'm just thinking, you know, if you're, I mean, wouldn't you want an English major with a doctorate degree in English? <laughs> you know, or a fabulous, you know, writer of books like, say, Judy Bloom. <laughs> I don't know where that came from. But I'm just saying, she's a known writer and she would not, uh, she, she knows the dangers of plagiarizing. You know, I mean, heck, even in college, not me, but, <laughs> but even in college, the way people that I know used to do it was <laughs> they would look at great works and then they would pull out the, um, the um, thesaurus and find a different word that means the same thing. <laughs> I don't know those people anymore. <laughs> Anyway, um, so Melania uh, said that, you know, she, um, or it's alleged that Melania was telling this woman, you know, some of these lines, and then the woman was writing them down, you know, as Melania's talking. And so then what the woman did, the ballet writer, is she, well, we know the rest of the story. So then she, you know, and because that story is getting so much attention, she says she, she'll, she feels bad for um, Trump's campaign, but she also feels bad for the family. And so she said, the best thing for me to do is just resign. So she um, resigned. Her resignation letter probably was plagiarized also. <laughs> So she turned in her letter of resignation and, and Trump, you know, uh, like I just told you before, said, you know, no, 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 everybody makes mistakes. And so you'll stay and we'll work this out. You know, there's nothing wrong with not firing people when they make mistakes. There's nothing wrong with that at all. But this is a mistake for the office of the highest job in the country. <laughs> This is, Mel Melania particularly has got to be really on point because people, not I, but people, some people have a problem with a first lady who is not originally from this country, you know, and the accent throws them off. So a lot of people were also giving her a pass, Melania, saying, well, you know, maybe she didn't really understand. It's a, no, 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 no. <laughs> Don't let that good figure, perky boobs and pretty eyes fool you. <laughs> Melania is smart. She is smart, but she also was perhaps less than smart for not proofreading the speech before she actually got out there and did it. And you know the lines, Melania, that you gave this woman, so when you see this woman repeating, word is bond, or I, you, you, know, you know what I mean? When you see that in your speech, as you're driving over to the venue with your husband and you're looking over your, or whatever, well, she's a busy woman. She's got Baron to take care of. She's got an empire to run, and she's got her own cosmetic line and jewelry and stuff. Yeah, she's smart in her own right. But at some particular point, you should have looked over your own speech. Yeah. That's all. <laughs> Let my me. <laughs> mm, this is the last day of our show until September. Well, oh, because I'm gonna miss you. Aww. But, but, but not so all, because me and Suzanne and the Bureau, we're exhausted. Yeah, we are going out tonight. Yeah, yeah we are going out yeah, tonight. Yeah, we're going out hard. <laughs> have you ever had a Moscow mule? Yes, I have. I've I never love, had one. I'm I, gonna have, try one tonight. Yeah, I'm gonna have three. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, we work hard and we play hard here yes. at Wendy. Yeah! Yes. So, <laughs> so
So yesterday we were talking about Lady Gaga and her fiance Taylor Kinney. They've split after five years and um, well, now there's more to the story. We might know actually why. According to our friends at Radar Online, Taylor, who's got a job for the hundredth time, he's on that show Chicago Fire. You know, cause a lot of times people think that, you know, when you're with somebody like Gaga, that you, you, you're some kind of loafer or something like that. No, he's got a job. He might not make as much as her, but he makes his money. And the show was successful. Well, reportedly, it's being said, according to Radar, that Taylor is jealous of Gaga's fame. Oh. Well, I, I did not see this coming, honestly. Honestly, I did not see this coming. Not everybody wants to be as famous as a Gaga. There's some people who enjoy being the Mac in the back, like, da like Danny Motor, who's married to the beautiful Julia Roberts. Yeah. You know, da Danny... Are Julia and I wearing the same wig? <laughs> and am I the only one who thinks that Danny looks like Kevin Bacon? Yeah. Right, kind of? Anyway, so he's like a cameraman on the set. And, and no, I'm talking about Julia and, and Danny. So he's like a cameraman on the set. And they end up falling in love. And all these years later, they have Phineas and Hazel and a whole bunch of property. And he's always let her shine and do her thing. And I never hear anything about him being jealous. But his job, it's a regular union job. It's not even paying as much as like um, Taylor's job at Chicago Fire. There's some guys that are fine with supporting their women in that way. Um, it's being alleged though that Taylor's not one of those things. And one of the jumping or the tipping points to him being upset is that, cause you know, when he met her, um, he was the love interest on one of her videos. And they, they'd been together for five years. But he met her as Gaga, the one with the meat dress and in the egg. <laughs> you know, the iconic Gaga. But you know when things fell apart? When she tried to swerve into his lane and start acting. Yeah. Well, you know, he's never won anything. <laughs> I don't mean that in a bad way. I just mean that he's never won anything. In the meantime, she just started acting. Now she's got that big role in American Horror Story. She won a Golden Globe for the war for, the, for this show, um, American Horror Story. That is like getting up to bat and knocking it out of the park on your first time ever playing baseball. <laughs> like what? Like, so so I, I understand what he's saying and it, it makes even more sense. You know, it's like if my husband got a talk show. <laughs> Which, by the way, it would be called the Yo, 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 The Yo Show. But no, no, really, it's, you know, there's some people who do better when success is achieved in two different lanes. Like, I would not want to be a doctor married to another doctor. married to an actor maybe because I dabble in acting, you know, but the second I get a Golden Globe, that's when he'd be pissed. And it, you know what? And it's almost human nature, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Clap if you know what I mean. <laughs> and one more thing. I don't think that I'm being petty in saying that. I think that you know, when you're with somebody and you love them, you root them on in all the things you do, or, or they do, until they come into your lane. <laughs> like stay over there and be su successful. <laughs> do I think that Gaga and Taylor will get back together now that I know this? Th absolutely not. Oh. No, no. Okay, Suge Knight. Oh. Who? <laughs> Well, Suge Knight is frightened. Oh. I know, such a, such a menacing man. But no, he's frightened that um, his ex, our friend Misha Lay, is gonna spill his secrets. Ooh. Well, Suge, I don't know where you've been, cause she's been spilling your secrets for years. <laughs> she spilled them on my radio show. She spilled them here on our TV talk show. She spilled them on when I did the reunion of R&B Divas. Uh, she talked all about all of the abuse, you know, verbally and things like, she's talked about that. So the only thing that's left is us for, for us to visually see how you all got down. And thanks to the people at Lifetime, we will. It's gonna be good, it's gonna be good, it's gonna be good.
So Michelle is currently filming a Lifetime movie about her life. So if it's your story to tell, then who are you, Suge, and Suge's lawyers, to s send a warning note over to Lifetime talking about if they make him look bad, then you're gonna sue for defamation? Sue Lifetime? Well, what, is, what would she be defaming? Girl, I hope you still have all the bills and whatever, like. <laughs> what? The receipts, the receipts. I mean, this should be a really interesting movie. First of all, I guess she's not scared to do it now that Suge is in jail and probably will be there for a very long period of time seeing as he ran over a man, backed his car up and ran over him again. And we saw that on the film, The Man Died. Um, yes, that happened, you know, fairly recently. I mean, the thing with Misha Lay, that was the word in the street for many, 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 that was back when she was with Dr. Dre and Dr. Dre used to put it to her. You don't know this? Wait, where have you people been? Okay, Michelet claims that Dr. Dre, among other things, one time gave her a black eye. And then, you know how if you watch enough movies and abuse is not funny, so, or if you've been abused, you know, sometimes um, you'll see where a man tends to like knock you down and hit you and then help you back up and, and hug you like he feels bad. His knee jerk reaction was then to back. Anyway, so Dr. Dre allegedly gave her a black eye. Well, she told the story from her own mouth. Um, and afterwards he felt so remorseful that, um, and she went to bed after that, you know, crying. And he got in the bed with her and they both cried over it. Well, Dr. Dre has never admitted that he did this, but these two have never admitted a lot. We don't need their side of the story. I wanna hear, I wanna see Misha Lay. Um, do a good job with this and don't be scared of Suge. He's, he can no longer get you. Cause he's, yeah. It's not good. And there's, there's a lot of stuff, by the way, back to the movie. There's a lot of stuff that I wanna see in this movie. It has nothing to do with the abuse. It has to do with like, okay, so when you and Suge first met, you know, where'd you go for dinner? Did he drive? Did you drive? When you all moved into, you know, your first giant house, you know, were there servants or just one housekeeper? Were there five pools? Like, you, you know what I mean? I wanna see lifestyle. All right, so. Kelly Price. Now, you know Kelly. Well, this, is, this was not Kelly's fault, but people are always looking for somebody to blame, so they blame Kelly. She's getting backlash, because Kelly, um, who you know, has a beautiful voice, she's a singer. Well, she was booked um, to perform at Indiana's Black Expo. So she gets there, and um, she's on time, and everything is good, but the schedule changed. I guess, you know, with the people who threw the expo, the, ch the schedule changed, and all of a sudden, she wasn't performing at the time she was supposed to perform. She wasn't even performing on the same stage that they told her she was gonna be. Why am I talking with my hand? Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Because I'm from Jersey. <laughs> that's, 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 that's what we do. It's a stereotype of Jersey people to talk with their hands and a stereotype of Italian people every place to talk with their hands, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> anyway, um, all right. Even though it's so cold, I need a warm drink. All right, um, they, pushed, they put her on a different stage and they also changed the time that she was performing. Anyway, the stage that they put her on wasn't um, the main stage you know, where we sinners watch. <laughs> it was the gospel stage. Well, that's not bad. She's a very, um, you know, nice woman. What do you think that she sang, though? <laughs> On the gospel stage. All the gospel audience is standing there. And uh, here goes Kelly. It's morning. <laughs> Shirley Murdoch, everybody, as we lay. Look, let me finish. Tell me when to stop so we don't have to pay for this. <laughs> The show is about infidelity, and she's up there talking about, it's morning. <laughs> now it's time for us to say goodbye. <laughs> goodbye, baby. <laughs> You're leaving me. <laughs> I know you've got to hurry home to face your wife. <laughs> <laughs> well. 
People are clutching their pearls. They're holding their rosary beads. They're using their Jesus fans. People are looking from one side to the other at each other. And you know, when you really get emotional when you sing, you don't sing with your eyes open, if you notice. So Kelly probably had no idea that these people were looking like, what is going on? So after Kelly performed, the host, I don't know who the host was, but came out and kind of tugged the microphone from her. And Kelly walked off and the host looked at Kelly like, you know, as if to say, I'm sorry you all, that was way inappropriate. Like the host shaded Kelly, Kelly shaded the, the community by doing As We Lay, but that was the song that she practiced and rehearsed. I just think it was a calamity of errors. I forgive you, Kelly. Anyway. <laughs> we have more great show for you, everybody. Our friend Shasu Post is here, and she's gonna show us the summer's best beauty essentials for under $100. But up next, it's Real Life Hot Topic. From the Real Housewives of Atlanta, Peter Thomas is here. Grab that popcorn and come on back.